Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I am Susan Lynn. I'm a psychic and a medium and I talk about politics and a whole bunch of other stuff on this channel. Um, for if you're new here, I get guidance from my spirit guides as I'm doing these videos. They basically have like a two-way communication with me throughout my day. Um, it's really something you should think twice about before starting, just saying. But anyway, I also want to say the things I'm about to tell you are not my opinion. Believe me, it's not my opinion. <laughs> we disagree. I disagree with my guides. Now, of course, they have a much bigger view than I do. They also have much more compassion than I do, right? They, they, I mean, maybe that comes with the bigger view or maybe that just comes from being an, an ascended being, right? Um, so I'm going to answer your questions. I put on my community page here on my channel that I would like for you guys to send me some political questions and that I would answer them or at least ask my spirit guides to answer them. Um, I also want to say that even though my spirit guides have a much more global view than I do, we're all still dealing with humans <laughs> and free will. So in the majority of the cases, they're reading the energy of the humans and the humans the humans are involved in or with right now. So things can change, right? Um, psychic readings, when I'm talking to my guides, basically we're reading the energy. We're reading the nature of the person. What's their personality? Will they give in to pressure? Will they not give in to pressure? Um, is there some pressure coming to bear on them that we don't know about yet? That would be something interesting, right? So, but these things are not written in stone, okay? So what I'm going to do, I think, <laughs> I think, is do a little bit of a lightning round. I'm going to really connect with them. It's it's going to be almost like a light channel, if you will. Um, that way I don't have my own personality or opinions involved in this. And um, I'm going to do a, kind of a lightning round. I've, I've copied your questions over here, and I'm going to read them and just give you very quick, hopefully, answers to them so uh a faves writes um there's a man filmed in a window at the capitol building appearing to signal somebody in the crowd on jan 6 uh who was this was it a congress member um no it wasn't a congress member um when i'm tapping into my guides and i'm tapping into this person of course this person it, it did not uh wasn't on the up and up they were involved in the uh melee they're calling it. They're involved in the insurrection, uh, the event. They're, they're, this person was involved. This person was integral in the planning of the event. Uh, in other words, this person was at meetings that described and talked about the event. Um, these meetings started in December, uh, but the, the, the previous year. Um, these meetings were attended by high level officials of the United States government. And um, I do believe that this meeting was attended by a general that starts with an F. Um, I am seeing this person. Uh, they're showing me this person at that meeting. Um, this person, if it is him, and, it, and, it, and it, it, the likeness appears to be him, uh, he is wearing a uniform. And I see gold braids here. I don't know if that's him. I don't know if he wears it. I'm just describing what they're showing me. So high level people involved. Was the the president uh, at that point in December, the uh, former guy in, at this meeting? <laughs> I heard no and yes, which means that it's complicated. It means that he was either there via phone or by uh, some sort of uh, telecom. They're saying a telecom. Um, I do know that he, he didn't, he put in a telecom system in the White House. Um, so he wasn't there in person. Um, they're saying you have to understand this person, and I'm talking about the former guy, this person knows how to evade. This person is a master at, um, staying out of a direct culpability is what they're saying direct culpability so in other words not going to be uh doing something that they that they think is going to get them uh in trouble 
So there's always an intermediary. There's always a, a barrier of some kind, right? I mean, that's very MOB-like as well, right? Um, so, uh, plus, let's face it, he had, he had really good, uh, people advising him, like Barr <laughs> and other people telling him exactly what line to stay on the other side of so you don't get in trouble, right? Um, so back to this person, the man filmed in the window at the Capitol. Yes, he, he was involved. He was integral. Um, I'm gonna go into his energy a little bit more. It feels like he is, um, I haven't seen this picture. I haven't seen this video. Uh, but he's a white guy who feels like he's middle aged. And I feel like he's, um, I mean, not tanned. In other words, not even olive skin, like pretty pale dude. Um, a dark medium brown hair. I don't know. Anyway, um, he, <laughs> they're saying he's in it up to here his neck and up to his eyeballs. He's in it up to his eyeballs. Who is he? Okay, I just, this is what I heard, guys. Who knows that this is true, but this is the information that I'm getting. And we may never know the whole truth because, honestly, we never really find out all the details, do we? But I just heard uh, Jordan, J, JJ. He has a connection to JJ. JJ is in trouble, by the way. Wow. I think JJ, I mean, I think he deserves, I think he deserves everything he gets. But I also hear a sacrificial lamb. So I see someone pinning things on him. Uh, look, uh, somebody else asked in another question, why is uh, Barr and these people uh, so quiet? Well, because um, the, the loud mouths are the ones that are going to get things pinned on them. <laughs> That's the way it works, right? I mean, if you're going to be dumb enough to run your mouth like MJT or MTJ, M, what is Marjorie Taylor Greene. I can always say her name, but I can't get the acronym. If you're going to run your mouth, then you're a perfect scape, scapegoat. Are you not? You're just asking for it. So this is what's going to happen. These people that are running their mouths are going to end up being scapegoats. Um, and I, I'm sorry to say that, uh, a lot of people are going to get off the hook or not be nearly as in as much trouble as they should be because they're going to give up these other people. Now, when I say give up, that's not exactly the right translation of what they're telling me. What they're telling me is, is that these people are, <laughs> I swear to God, y'all, I just heard dangerous and evil. <laughs> I, they are uh, implicated. They are guilty. Okay? But they're not going to be guilty for everything that they're going to be piled on with because they're the sacrificial lamb. Okay? Uh, hopefully that all makes sense to you. Moving on to Patricia. Patricia says, um, who disabled the panic buttons in some of the congressional office? And will we see justice for those those crimes? You know, Again, it's the same person. This person who I feel like was, is a, uh, or was, might be past tense. This person may no longer hold that position, right? Um, was a, a ringleader. I just heard ringleader. Um, he was sort of, um, he wasn't really the ring. He was, okay, so you have levels, right? You have uh, this level and this level and this level, okay? So maybe the former guy's the ringleader up here, and then, you know, you drop down a couple of levels. Well, in, in charge, he was in charge of something. He was the ringleader of, of something going on there at the cap that day. And, um, and that man has a lot to do with this. He knows. He knows a lot. We need to find out who that guy is, and we need to find out if he's going to flip. Um, sorry for him that he's not known. If he was known, he would have protection. But, but he, nobody really, I mean, not nobody. I take that back. A lot of people know who he is, but the public doesn't know who he is. So he doesn't really have the protection that he should have because, um, it, it might be easier just to make that person disappear. Uh, so we, he may just disappear in some fashion, uh, either, uh, either, um, by his own will or, or not. Okay. Um, so, 
Um, I know that Jen of Jen's World on our live on Thursdays, uh, she said that she got JJ, the guy I was just talking about a little minute ago, is responsible for the panic buttons. Um, I would say you could trace it to him in the way that I see a web, right? So there's, there's a lot of, there's multiple people involved. He, he is definitely, um, Six degrees of separation, they just said. So, yes, you can trace it to him. Is he directly involved? I don't think so, but he may be the, mo the most, um, the person with the most responsibility. So, he should take the fall, in my, in my opinion. Um, okay, moving on. Uh, Kathleen said, is Melania a rusky asset? Yes. Yes. Look up the word honey pot. Yes. Um, we talked about that. Jen and I talked about that on our live on Thursday night as well. Um, she got that Melania's dad uh, put her in the line of service, if you know what I'm talking about, uh, as a way to um, uh, position her as a model um, and position her in a, such a way that she would have access to high-level uh, rich men uh, and in that way, elevate the family and elevate herself. Now, she's well suited for it. I mean, you know, she's well suited for it. I don't, I, I'm not sure which came first, but I'm, I'm sure that she had a bit of a, a personality that, that was, um, you know, and maybe she just understood that that was her lot in life and she needed to make the best of it. I don't know. But, um, but she certainly has made the best of it. I'm just going to say that. Um, it's horrible. It's sick. I'm going to tell you that when I go into that energy, it's sick. Um, yeah, I mean, everybody is an asset. What, why, why would we think that they're not assets? I mean, this is a communist country where just like China, I mean, you're either with them or against them. There's no, there's no gray area here. It's pretty black and white. And if you're with them, then they get to ask you to do whatever they need to ask you to do. And you're obliged to do it. So, um, in that way, everybody is an asset. And my, it, it, that's, that's what they're saying. Um, okay. Um, and Deborah wants to know, um, did I skip you, Deborah? Deborah wants to know if the officials responsible for the one six, the government officials responsible for the one six will be punished. <laughs> Stripped from running office, uh, jail times and fines. Okay. Yes. Um, again, back to the scapegoating thing. Uh, government officials will be held responsible. Um, I do see them, again, back to the general with the F, I see them being punished. I see them being punished, really punished. But I think he might be a flight risk, for real, a flight risk to R. Big dummy. Um, a general, a general. Oh, my God, it's... It's indicative. If that's, if that's not indicative, if that doesn't illustrate what we've been through, I don't know what does. Uh, so yes, they will be punished. I don't, Banny running, stripped from holding future office is a law that I, you know, there's laws that dictate who can run for office. So I don't know that they're going to be banned over and above what the law already says. And, uh, the state's laws are actually more stringent than the federal laws. So I don't think that, but I, but I think that the F gen, general F is going to be gone, flying gone. Um, he's nuts. You guys, that guy's crazy. When I go into his energy, what is, what do you call that when someone's been, uh, converted? You know what I mean? When, when someone has been, um, converted to the other side, I have to be careful about what I'm saying. Jen had two videos taken down. Uh, people are having videos taken down. Uh, Jen and I's live video on Thursday got attacked by trolls. Uh, literally attacked in the middle of the live video where they were uh, commenting uh, racist and homophobic and every other kind of slur. And uh, it took us a long time to uh, beat them, but we did. Um, and that's where we are right now. So we all have to be careful. Um, some, some channels are going to be moving to... Uh, Patreon or other sites that aren't on here in case their videos get taken down. They can at least uh, get the information out. Uh, okay, so um, 
Moving on. So, uh, Christina, if I miss your comment, I'm sorry. I'm doing the best I can, guys. Um, yeah, Christina wants to know, is Biden finally close to blowing his stack and allowing the filibuster to be eliminated? Um, and, and Biden losing his stack. Okay. He, I, here's the thing that the guides keep showing me. This, they really talked about this before the video because, um, I've been wishy-washy. I mean, I think Biden is doing a great job in general. I think he's a great president for us. Um, but I have my moments when Susan gets really PO'd and mad that he's not standing up more, that we're, that we're capitulating, that we're accepting these crumbs in these bills, you know, just acting like we have no power, right? Um, so my guides then tell me about Biden and they say, um, that I don't know why they use this analogy because I didn't even watch this movie, but Spider-Man, uh, you know, they're saying, look, people didn't know People don't know who Batman was. People didn't know who Spider-Man was. In other words, they, they, these people do a lot more work behind the scenes than in front of you. Okay. So that's the, that's the thing they want to say. He is working his butt off behind the scenes. Um, and, and, and again, if you watch my videos, remember the guides talked about this boiling pot with the lid on it. And the boiling pot and how the lid starts to get pushed up and it starts rattling, right? When it, when it starts to boil over. And that's where we are. And Biden is putting his hand on the pot, trying to keep everything calm. Okay. Now, why is he doing that? Well, because we're in the middle of some pretty dicey things. We finally got our economy back and it's going really well. Jobs are available. Uh, people are traveling again. Um, life is kind of back to normal. And now guess what? Now we're being hit with a renewed, um, you know, version of this C-19 that's very um, transmissible and everything. So he's trying, Biden is really trying to thread a needle. So if he were to go to come out and say, I'm going to stack the court, I'm going to appoint three new justices, I'm going to get rid of the filibuster, I'm going to do... Um, you know, I'm going to pass these bills through special signings. I'm, I'm just going to go the way I want to go and make it happen. Um, and then I'm going to mandate, this is, would be a big one. I'm going to mandate vaccines. That would be the one. That's the trigger. The guides, that's the trigger for the guides, uh, to say that if he said that we would have civil problems, we would have, uh, issues with certain people being the zero percenters and the, um, we came up with names for all these people on the live, the oatmeal cookies for the oath keepers. Um, so, so the oatmeal cookies and the zero percent, this is what they want. They want to destabilize us. They want to destabilize our whole country, make us feel unsure, unsafe. And you know what? They're working on both sides, guys. They're not just working on the right. They're working on the left. They're destabilizing the left just the same way they're destabilizing the right. Okay, so Biden needs to keep everybody chill, right? That's what he needs to do because he's not going to get anything done if we devolve into mass protests and that kind of thing. And I saw that. I saw that picture a while back where, and I, I there's a video about it, <laughs> where I told you guys that I see the left out protesting, I see the right out protesting, I see skirmishes between them, and I see, um, actually at that time, I saw Kamala Harris being president and her putting people in jail, right and left, doesn't matter what side. So therefore, she got, she was not very popular, but she was fair. So if you destabilize the left and you destabilize the right, and you make both sides feel like nobody's paying attention, nobody's helping them, and nobody is, is uh, um, governing them, respecting them, then they're going to take to the streets and then we're going to have this problem. So this is where Biden is having a problem. Um, so what is he doing? Here's what he's doing. For better or worse, this is why when I said in the very beginning, this is their opinion, not my opinion, uh, because they have a global view and they're more compassionate. This is exactly what I was talking about, this scenario right here, which is, Biden is going behind the scenes. He's using all his muscle and all of the data that he has from the CIA and the FBI to go to these people 
And you can imagine, you know their names. We all know their names. And he's going to them and he's putting pressure on them. Putting pressure on them. Why do you think all of a sudden, all of a sudden, these R's are out there touting the vaccine? Why do you think all of a sudden, and Joe Manchin said this, and I, and I'm going to tell you right now, I, I don't want Joe Manchin. Joe Manchin doesn't get any credit. He doesn't need to be anything except for a footnote in history that, that he's right next to McConnell as obstructionist. Okay. That's what he needs to be is right next to McConnell. He's the Democratic version of O'Connell. He's an obstructionist. He's not a Democrat. He's been bought and paid for. But anyway, I digress. Um, so Manchin said, it's got to be a good bill if you've got Chuck Schumer and Mitch McConnell to sign off on it. That's the latest infrastructure pre-bill where they try to get everybody on board so that when they take the vote, they know that they're going to have an actual vote that's going to work, right? So you have a bill on infrastructure where McConnell and, Sh and, and Schumer are both voting for it. What? what? Hello? When did that happen? I'm going to tell you, uh, when George W. Bush was in office, maybe? Not during the Obama years, not during the Biden years, um, not even during the Trump years. So that's a historic thing. Now, the bill's terrible. It's not what we want. It's not what the left wants. Again, here we are, dissatisfying the left. Not what the right wants, dissatisfying the right. There is no middle anymore, y'all. The middle has, has been hollowed out. So it's a problem. But Biden is making that happen. Biden is the middle. He might be standing there by himself, but he is the middle. So he is making those things happen. He really is working. He really is trying to do this. Now, what I see and what I've seen for months, which generally means it's going to happen. I mean, if, if they keep showing me the same thing for such a long time, it means the energy is pretty much set in stone. It's not likely to change that much. What I see is that um, Biden Biden's hand gets forced when... There's a leak. When there's a leak, there's um, a journalistic leak, and that leak blows the lid off the pot, and that's what they've been saying for months. Um, various investigative journalists are trying to give him all the time. They see that he's, they see he's working. They see he's making a difference. But journalism is a is a sport. I mean, it's it's competitive. So they can only hold the stories for as long as they don't have a competitor that's going to publish it. So at some point, other people are going to have this information and it's going to get published. Now, what information is that? Well, it's it's information regarding the people we just talked about. The JJs, the, J, the General Fs, right? The Marjories, the, the Laurens, the Mats. You know, all those people, even the McConnells, even the, um, where's Lindsey Graham been? <sighs> Missing in action. Where's Barr been? Missing in action. Because again, if you spout your mouth, you're a target. Oh, if you just take your time and go out and uh, go back to your other nefarious dealings, then, you know, you're, you're not going to be on anybody's really high list radar. You may actually get by with nothing. You may get by with some few slaps on your wrist, but you certainly aren't going to go down. So yes, Biden is, um, he really is working. I mean, I think this makes me feel better because I've been giving him grief lately in my head and otherwise, and, and he is working. Yeah, we just can't see it. Um, and, and these people are going to be held accountable. They are, they are, they are. Um, maybe it's not enough for us, but for them, it's going to be a big fall. Right. For us, maybe it's orange with some shiny things around your wrist. <laughs> but for them, maybe losing their career is a big fall. Maybe for them, um, being disgraced is a big fall. Right. So, it, it, you know, it's, I do see justice coming. I do. I see it coming. Um, yeah. Will the officers at the hearing get hero awards? I thought that the officers already got medals of honor, uh, from Biden. Um, the booster shots, uh, that, that was actually by Jennifer and now Sue Ellen asked, um, will there be booster shots coming this fall season? Um, no, <laughs> no, we don't need them. 
We don't need them. Uh, we don't need them until spring. I will say that I, I heard somebody say, and I don't know if it was faulty, somebody say we have enough vaccines to do. If we needed booster shots, we have it. We, you don't have to worry about supply. It's there. Uh, but they, they feel like, um, they feel like it's, we're, we're doing really well with, with the vaccine. We're doing really well being protected. Um, their, their focus is on people getting the first shot. That's where their focus is, uh, getting people at least vaccinated the first time. Um, this is a question Anita asks about the mayor in New York City. Uh, and it, and it's, it's specifically about New York City, but I'm going to broaden it some. She wants to know, uh, Will they finally give parents options for remote learning? Uh, as he first said, all will be in person at NYC. Look, this is a bigger prop. This is a bigger thing. We can just take this question and broaden it for the whole United States. Um, what I see is that, um, okay, it's spotty, right? It, it, it's This whole thing is going to be spotty. There's going to be pockets of resistant. Resistant to what? resistant are they resistant people or resistant virus resistant virus okay pockets of resistant virus i think what they're talking about is the d virus okay um because we know people are getting that that have been vaccinated so it's resistant to the vaccine i'm not sure but anyway here's what i see uh overall the pockets of the country that have problems they will try to go back to school. That is the game plan. Nobody, it's just like the mask. There's no appetite for the American people. There's no will. There's no pressure. There's no support. Overall, with the American people to do homeschooling, there's none. So um, I think they are going to go back to school. However, I do see schools then bailing and, and putting home schooling back in practice around October. Not all schools. Not all schools. Uh, states like Texas, God help us all, uh, our governor has put out a, whatever, a mandate, I don't know what it is, an edict, because he thinks he's, you know, he thinks he's a communist leader or something. But anyway, he's put out an edict that, that we can't force people to wear masks, which means the schools can't even decide for themselves if those kids are going to wear masks. I mean, he's taking away the right of, I mean, they're all for individuals' rights, right, until they're not. Um, so these schools can't pass their own laws. So in Texas, we could have a real problem here because we can't even help our kids be safe. Um so um, that's a that's a big problem. I, I again I see um, you know what it's weird sports I see and I've said this before in another video I see uh, the coaches at, going to the team uh, physicians or going to uh, the, the the kids the athletes and saying uh, if you want to participate in this sport you're going to have to get the vaccine because you're going to be over 12 right you're in high school football we got to go get the vaccine i don't care we're gonna, we got a chance to go to state and i'm not having the coach is saying i'm not having my chance taken away you're going to be healthy no right so again as usual in texas sports rule right so the coaches are going to actually be the ones um getting some coverage as far as the vaccine goes it's it's crazy but that's what we have to do uh so the answer to the question is some schools will be open some schools will close it depends on your area but yes some schools will have to close for a certain for a period of time um i think maybe this is a good time to talk about the actual uh variant that's out there now the d version um I think this is really what I see, and I, I'm willing to kind of bet money on it at this point because it's the energy is super strong. I see it being big, bad, and ugly, and then I see it dissipating. Now, I disagree with Jen. Jen disagrees with me. I might disagree with other people out there. You know, who knows what's going to happen? I'm just telling you, I see it being really bad, 
and then I see it sort of dissipating maybe in uh, December. Um, I see it dissipating, dropping off, not dissipating. That's a bad word. Dropping off. So I see it peaking in October, September, October, September, October. Show me where it peaks. Where does it peak? I was just showing me a line going up. Um, maybe November. And then it comes, it starts to drop. So it's like a, a line that goes up on a graph and then it drops precipitously. Um, now I, I have a friend who's a virologist. Okay. So I know a lot about, and I, when you have one friend, it's like all of a sudden all your friends are weird doctors. But anyway, um, I know a little bit about vi, about viruses in the sense that they, they, to be a successful virus, you need to keep your host alive. <laughs> if you kill your host, you're not, you're not going to survive. You're not going to be a long lasting virus. I mean, look at the common cold, right? Um, so, um, this virus is too virulent, virulent. It's too strong. It's too, uh, it, it does its job too well. So it's not going to last forever. Now, will there be other variants? Absolutely. Will there be ever other versions? Absolutely. Um, I think this might be moving into an endemic from a pandemic, meaning it's going to last, you know, like a common cold. You know, the best thing we can do is get this thing down to something that's like the flu or down to like a cold. Um, but that's going to take a while because other countries are not vaccinating and we're just creating more opportunities for this thing to mutate until we until we get it um we get it really to herd immunity or something uh it's going to keep mutating so anyway i feel like it's going to drop off so then i feel like personally i see we're kind of still recovering in december okay but but i see that uh the spring looks good to me the spring looks good to me as far as that goes i don't see it lasting six months um, I mean, it's going to be ugly for a couple of months. I'm, I'm not even going to, y'all know I don't play. I don't, I don't tell you what you want to hear. Stock up, stock up now. Uh, cause it's going to be a couple of months of really tough times. Um, yeah, uh, here's a question from Marianne. Um, well, are Christian, Christian cinema and Joe Manchin being paid? Yes, they are. <laughs> yes, they are. Will they be exposed? Um, You know what? When I go into Kristen Cinema's energy, I keep hearing recall. Can we recall her? I keep hearing recall, recall, recall. I think they might recall her. Or maybe they're in the process of recalling her. I don't know. She's in trouble. She's in trouble. Uh, Joe Manchin, y'all know where he's from? He's from West Virginia. I'm from Kentucky. I kind of know a little bit about West Virginia. Um, I don't know that he's, he's, um, what Joe Manchin is, is, is a, a, you know, a shill. I, I think I said this before, right? He's, he is, he's being paid. He's being, um, he's a plant. He's a plant in the Democratic Party. He doesn't, he's not a Democrat. He's, he's, um, he's going to be wily, right? He's going to vote, not vote, vote, not vote. He's meant to disrupt. He's there to disrupt. I think Kristen Cinema is going to go bye-bye, but I don't think Joe Manchin is. Joe Manchin is going to be a pain in our butt for a while. But um, I see a wave of support. Uh, I see Americans getting together. I guess these are Democrats getting together to support certain races. So like me in Texas, I would send money to someone in West Virginia, right? We've already done that. We, we sent millions of dollars to Kentucky to overthrow Mitch McConnell, which he got mad about. But, you know, that's what they did to themselves. If, if uh, corporations are people, then people are people too, and we can all donate like crazy. So I see I see us targeting Mansion. Kristen Sinema's got problems. I think they're going to recall her. Um, Texas governor arrests the Democratic Congress people, and will he stay in power? No, he's not going to arrest them. He's a big doofus. Um, Okay, the, what they're showing me is something weird is going on in Texas, and I don't like, I don't think I like it. I mean, Beto is great. I love Beto. Um, but I feel like I keep seeing Beto in the Senate, and I don't see him as governor. Uh, I don't. I just don't. 
Um, there's weird money, dark money. I'm just seeing this for the first time. Um, weird dark money in the governor's race and office. It's dangerous. Y'all, I'm telling you, it's dangerous. And Beto either knows that, he's been warned, and he's been told this, you want to do something, run for Senate, but you're not, you're not running for governor. You won't make it. Okay. I don't think, I don't think Beto is the kind of guy that gets scared about stuff like that, but I think he's pragmatic and I think he really knows, uh, look, you know what they just showed me? MLK. You want to be like MLK? What, where would we be if we had these people in our lives today? A lot better off. <laughs> We'd be a lot better off if we had MLK in our lives today. So I think he's pragmatic. I think he's thinking, okay, I can't go this route. Let me get there. So let me go a different way. Let me keep working. Let me be viable, right? Um, so that's what I think about that. So I, I, didn't, I need, do need to talk about that guy. Golly, I can't ever remember his name. What is his name? The guy, um, I, I really don't like him. Uh, the guy that's running for governor on the down low. He's a actor. He's the guy, uh, McConaughey. McConaughey. McConaughey moved to Austin, Texas from Hollywood. He's a professor, some kind of adjunct or I don't know what he is. Honorary, I don't know. Professor at UT. And, and he's doing these, he's building, he's building his base here in Texas. He's building his base here in Texas. Now, how he's doing it is, he's, he's coming across as literally middle of the ground. Like, I'm not liberal. I'm not right wing. Um, you know, he kind of swerves this way, swerves that way. And in that way, he's really hoping to secure the, uh, race for himself. Um, and, and we all know he can, we've seen other states, uh, wasn't it Michigan that had the professional wrestler? I mean, look at the United States of America. <laughs> look what we had. <laughs> so this guy can do it, but there's something weird, 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 weird about him. Um, and I'm going to say this too, and I hope this, I'm getting, this is why some of us are thinking about going to a paid membership site like Patreon because we're afraid to talk publicly. I swear to God. I swear. I'm afraid to talk publicly about this stuff. I really am. Um, and, uh, a private site would be safer. But anyway, when I, when I go into Texas, uh, governor's race and I go into the dark money, I get, um, the M country to the south of us. <laughs> I get that. And I get, uh, the letter D and, uh, the letter C. A group of people to the south of us that do things that are not good, that have to do with D's. Okay. Now, how does that make any sense? Well, if we're going to legalize certain D's, then they need to make sure that they have the right people in office. And that is, I swear to God, what I'm getting. And that is scary, um, to be honest uh, with you guys. Okay, so that's about as much as I'm going to say. Um, what what else do we have here? Um, Carlin wants to know, why did the politicians leave Washington instead of extending the eviction mor moratorium? Science. They're showing me... We have some real problems here. Uh, have you guys heard of the Great Resignation? Have you heard of the Great Resignation? People are leaving their jobs. People uh, spent a year in their house. Um, they saw their blood pressure go down. They saw their health go up. They saw their mental health go up. They saw um, they they saw they saw their lives for the first time. They actually had time to think about what they wanted. And they don't want to go back to that crappy job in service industry. So um, we have this. So so here's what's happening. People need workers. They need workers. Low paying workers. Because the low paying workers are like, screw you. I'm going to go do these other jobs. 
maybe I went out on my own. Maybe I decided to open up my own business doing something else. But it's, it's big. It's called the Great Resignation. Look it up. So right now what we have is people that don't want to work, um, businesses that need them to work, and some people are still hanging out on their unemployment benefits. Not a lot, but some. And these Republicans are saying, especially in Texas, that if, if we weren't, and Texas doesn't, didn't extend the employ, unemployment. Texas did not uh, extend it because they said these people need to go to work. We have jobs for them. They can't get on the government dole because they need to go get this job. Okay, fair enough, whatever. But when you're talking about extending the eviction moratorium, it's again, you're talking about the Republicans. We're talking about a compromise here. We're talking about the Democrats having to compromise with the Republicans. Um, I'm sure, I'm sure that was a compromise. The Republicans want landlords to be paid. Even though Biden is giving money to landlords now and paying their, Biden is literally paying landlords so that they don't lose out any money. But this, this, was, a, this was a capitulation. We capitulated. That's what happened there. Uh, it's a compromise. Uh, I, it's all it's all a mess, right? Uh, what's former AG Bar up to? And, and this is uh, Jackie. Hey, Jackie. Uh, Jackie O. Um, what's former Bar uh, AG Bar up to? Will, when will he be indicted? He left all of us hanging in the wind when he suddenly checked out. Um, he's gone underground because I told you these idiots that it's like whack a mole. It's just like whack-a-mole. Stick your head up, you're going to get hit. It's the same thing with the virus energy. You stick your head up, you're going to get hit. You know, just go underground. You got a pretty good chance of making it out without being in as much trouble. Right? Uh, so that's where he's gone. He has gone underground. Absolutely he's gone underground. Uh, he was the one I was literally thinking of when I said he's gone. Uh, these people have gone back to their other nefarious dealings, which I see that I see this happening on a yacht somewhere in the middle of international waters um, with a radar and a satellite dish on this yacht um, and literally brokering some kind of deals with other countries. That's what I see Barr doing. Is it illegal? Yep. Can we catch him? Not really. Not really. Very hard. Uh, will he eventually be rung up on something? Rung up on, rung up on charges on something? I kind of heard a no. He will be indicted. He will be charged. Will it stick? That's the question. That's the problem. That's the problem. He, y'all, he put traps in traps and traps. So he knows what he's likely to be indicted for. He's, he's, he's very smart. This, this dude is very smart. He's scholarly smart. When you study our Constitution and study our laws and you know them better than the prosecutor, you're probably going to get out. You're going to find a loophole somewhere. So what I mean when he set up traps, what I mean is, is that he knew if I do this and I do it with these people and I do it in this way, there's going to be a loophole. Everything he did, he made sure there was a loophole for. I'm telling you. Yes, he's going to get charged. No, he's not going to go to jail. And that infuriates me um, personally. Um, I don't know. Sue Dottie wants to know about the cyber ninjas. I mean, it's just a farce. Will they finally be declared to be frauds? They already have been declared to be frauds. Even Republicans have declared them to be frauds. This is where we start. We actually start believing this hype that they tell us. We've already told them they're frauds. We've already told them they're frauds. Will will Republicans believe they're frauds? No. No. Never. Um, Cynthia, you wants to know, is there a Democrat who's feeding information to Republicans and secretly supporting them? Mansion. <laughs> Mansion, yes. Cinema, kind of. Cinema's more complicated. Mansion's just a straight up for hire politician. He's for hire for anybody. Uh, but, you know, they have more money. Gene wants to know, what will it take our family members who drank the Kool-Aid to finally see that they've been lied to by madman and his enablers? Um, 
This is something I talked about with Allie on her channel, Heart and Soul Connected, yesterday on our live. Um, the It's complicated. These people have been... Okay. I tell you guys this and then I wonder later, should I have said that? Okay, there are people that I know, people that I know that know people. Okay, I'm second degree. Okay, that believe, and I mean truly believe, that Ronald Reagan is still alive. They believe that Elvis is still alive. They believe that, um, you know, you know what else they believe. They believe that the vaccine is a government plot to whatever, whatever. Okay, but they, but they've gone from believing that the government is out to get them to believing things that if you were to ask them two years ago, do you believe Elvis is alive? Do you believe Ronald Reagan's alive? Um, they would have said, no, are you crazy? But now they believe that. So these people have been psychologically programmed. Okay, psychologically programmed. Now, if you also, um, if you also look at my other video, a while back, you'll see that the guide said that they were going to create centers for them, that there would be deprogramming centers. And I truly believe we're going to see this in some cities, in some states, maybe not in the South. I don't know. But in some cities, in some states, and I keep hearing Depelchin, and I don't know why, because Depelchin, I think, is a center that does adoption. But these, they, I think they also do a, addiction, right? I mean, these are like... Um, for-profit centers that live off the government dole. They get a lot of money from the government. So uh, what I see is um, there's a building and it has like an ad addiction center uh, and then it has a deprogramming center. I, I mean, I'm not kidding. So the, the people that survive this, the people that literally survive this um, thing we're going through with the D, the new D, um, the new C19D version, those people that survive it, I, I feel terrible for them. And this is what I think the guides want us to know. And, and we've said, and I've said this many times, we are being asked to be compassionate. We are being asked that if your brother-in-law, sister-in-law, brother, sister, dad, uncle, best friend, co-worker comes to you and says, I has that moment of truth where they feel like they've been duped. The, the, the rug, you know, comes off of the eye. The, the cloth comes off of the eyes. And, they, and they're clearly looking around for the first time. And they're seeing the carnage of their life. Maybe they're a long hauler, you know, with symptoms. Maybe their wife is a long hauler. Maybe they've lost family members to this, to this V. Maybe they've lost their job. Maybe, maybe they lost their business because they got so radical. Maybe they ended up in jail because they were so radical. Maybe, um, maybe they just lost the respect of their family and their friends. And now they're literally despondent. They're literally broken. Broken people. And if that broken person comes to you, what the guides are asking us to do is to be compassionate. And I've said this before. And I'm saying it to me too because I have my moments when I want to say things like, you caused this. You're responsible. You should pay. You should pay. That's what, that's what I want to say. You should pay. You should be in jail. You caused these things to happen. But that's not what our guides want us to do. Our guides, our spirit guides, want us to be compassionate. I'm telling you right now, you watching this video, you're a light worker. This is why we're here. This is why we're here, is to be compassionate. I'm so sorry you got duped. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that happened to you. It must feel terrible. I'm so sorry. Let me, let me comfort you. Because they're acknowledging their culpability. Now, the people that should go to jail and be charged are the people like my governor, my lieutenant governor, and DeSantis, 
and uh, the former guy and uh, all the people that have po positions of power to influence people. They should be tried. They should go to jail. They, I feel very strongly about that. Now, will that happen? Will they be tried and go to jail? Um, no, they just said no. Um, there will be a, a, um, a coalition, but it's not a coalition. There will be a, a panel, kind of like the January 6th thing where they're investigating. Y'all, I'm telling you, I think it's three years from now. I think it's two to three years from now. It's like, you know when they say the long arm of justice? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, sometimes it just takes forever for justice to really come to fruition. And that's what we're dealing with there. Hopefully that all just made sense, because I don't really know. Um... Yes, we're going to, Frida, uh, Frida wants to know, will we learn anything new from January 6th commission that will actually surprise us? Yes, we will. We will. Um, maybe not surprise. I mean, in other words, we already know, we already know, right? We know the players. We know what they did. We know, we know the usual suspects, right? I think what will surprise us is the amount of planning, the amount of actual planning of all the different pieces coming together the premeditated planning is what's going to shock and horrify us that's what's going to surprise us um Melinda says she wants to know what the outcome of the DOJ suing Governor Abbott the Texas governor I don't know what the DOJ is suing the Texas governor for. Um, let me ask and see will it go through. I'm hearing a yes, but the DOJ could be suing Governor Abbott for five different things. I don't know which one this is, but I am hearing a yes. Um, here's a good one from Cattails. Will Katie Porter rise in the ranks? I think she will. Um, I don't think she'll rise like Elizabeth Warren rises, right? Like, um, like they, they keep these people that are kind of speak their mind. They don't really get, I mean, look at Bernie Sanders, right? I mean, you're not going to be, you know, the speaker or the, or, or the, you know, the leader of the house or the, or the leader of the Senate, um, if if you're not in the middle they're just not I, I personally think we need people like bernie and aoc and Kate, katie porter and elizabeth warren on the outside to agitate like chihuahuas nipping at them constantly keeping those uh, democrats in the center on edge and constantly pushing them making them uncomfortable because uh, that's what that's what we need um we do need that pressure and so I, I love Katie Porter. Um, yeah, what's going to happen to House to the members of Congress who assisted in the insurrection? They're going to be charged. Uh, they're going to be charged. Jen sees twelve people going down. I saw three women in our live on Thursday. I they told me three women whom I immediately knew was Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Bulbert, but I didn't know who the third woman was. They just told me three. The third woman we think is Ernst. This woman, Ernst. Um, they're going to be charged. And they're going to go out of the door. And, and, the, and the good thing about this is, is that, well, again, we have to look at the federal laws. The federal laws for serving in the House and the Senate are different than serving in your state House and Senate. Okay? Um, but the good thing about this is when these people start going down, that's when the Dems have a chance for a blue surge. So what we all need to do is pray and send light and love and lift up uh, these investigators and investigations so that this can happen before the midterms. This is one of those things that I think Biden is trying to do. He's trying, you know, he's got the, the chess board. He's playing chess 
behind the curtain. He's trying to put pressure and, oh, you know, I see him moving parts like these investigations go forward, these wait, then these go forward, then these wait. And it's all meant to put pressure on these people so that they leave, they retire. And indeed, that the guides are just telling me I forgot about this. The seventeen people, the seventeen Republicans that voted for the infrastructure bill, which was like a record. Uh, I think five of them, or at least, I think the word is four or five of them are retiring. So they're free to vote their conscience for once. So that works, right? Um, we need to get rid of we need to get rid of these people so that we can get new people in, and then we need to be careful. I need to tell you all this. This is a big deal. Um, we need to be careful in our districts. Like we have this problem with Matthew McConaughey running for governor. He's not who he says he is. Okay, the Kristen Cinemas, not who the, not who she said she was. We need to be careful of these wolves in sheep's clothing running for office. Use your energetic intuition to figure out who's good and who's not. Now, of course, Mansion is too, but but I think I think West Virginia is happy with him. They they don't care. But I think Cinema's people are not happy with her. Hence the recall. I hope that all makes sense. When I'm doing this through them, I just talking. I have no idea what I'm saying or if it makes any sense. Um, I'm gonna skip. I'm running out of time here. Um, D.D. Abel asked this question about why didn't the Secret Service put 45 in a secure location when the Capitol was breached? Will the head of that agency at Department of Homeland Security be called in to testify? Yes, they're going to be called in to testify. The man was implicit, complicit, complicit. He was implicitly complicit. 45. Complicit. I just see... I don't know why. He's covered in it. He's covered in it. They're showing me it looks like mud or caca, <laughs> but it's brown, and he's just covered in it. He's, he, yes, he, he, they didn't put him in a secure location because they thought they were going to win. They thought they were going to, he was going to stay in the White House forever. That's literally what he thought. And the person who helped him do this, who is from a different country that starts with an R, knew it wasn't going to work and he didn't care if it worked or not because all he cares about is disruption all he cares about is agitating agitating us making us feel unsafe making us hate each other that's what he's doing that's what he's doing guys it's a war it's a battle and it's happening inside of us and, it, and please be aware that that he has people inside the left inside your local and state organizations democratic organizations that are doing nothing but pitting us against each other you're not liberal enough you're too conservative when you hear stuff like that you need to understand that that is a that's a big red flag because that is how we're going to go down if we all start fighting locally against each other it's over and that's what he wants so you're going to see these actors these bad actors in your local democratic organizations i'm telling you you will and i'm telling you it's only going to get worse we have to have discernment i should i need to do a whole video about this um, i'm going to talk about it really quickly and i am going to do a whole video about this because you're watching a psychic and a medium obviously you understand about energy we can no longer use our mind to see if something is real there's going to be deep fake videos these videos are going to be so real. You're going to see deep fake um, social media. You're going to see things that are so real. And I know some of you are going to say we've already seen it. I know. But on a bigger scale. That we are not going to be able to really tell the truth anymore. That's how we got here. That's how these people have, were faked out into believing that the vaccine is bad for them. Now imagine if they turn that same apparatus towards us, towards the Dems. Imagine if they focused on us instead of them. Just imagine. Okay? Because it can happen. It's psychological warfare. We're all susceptible to it to a degree. 
So what my guides are saying is we have to go in here. We have to go into our solar plexus and know in our heart, start doing this. Start connecting to your heart. Connect to your heart and say, how does this, when I think of Matthew McConaughey, how does he feel in my heart? Duplicitous. Doesn't feel good. When I put his energy in my body, I don't like it. Now, let's put Biden's energy in my body. Again, you know what I see? Golden Retriever. <laughs> I just see a dog. Maybe some, pe some people might think Golden Retrievers are simple, right? <laughs> they might think they're just too happy, right? Or whatever. But that see the difference? Put, your, put, put people in your heart, see how they feel. Start using it now. Build that resource up. Build that muscle up. We're going to need it. You're going to need it. And you can use it at work. You can use it in your family. You can use it anytime. Should I go to the store today? How does it feel? Feels good. No, it doesn't feel good. Okay, I'm not going to go. Your body knows. Your body knows. Okay, um, I really am going to do a whole video on that because it's, I need to do 20 videos on that because it's really important. Um, I'm going to have to skip over some of these because this is an hour long already. Um, Will McCarthy, Erica asked, will McCarthy be expelled from Congress for his recent comment about Pelosi? Y'all have so much faith in our judicial system. <laughs> and listen, five years ago, yeah. Eight years ago, for sure. We had decorum, civility. People were held to a higher standard. People would look at uh, Al Franken, just step down for, the, for, for being, for looking like he did something bad. He didn't even do anything bad. He just looked. It didn't look right, so he stepped down. Those days are over, except for, for the Democrats. The Democrats still do that. The Republicans are like, ah, make me, make me. That's why when I go back to and I see those people that participated in January 6th, some of them are going to be like, make me. I'm not going anywhere. My voters voted me in. That's what they're going to start saying. So no, these people aren't going to step down. Okay, they're showing me. They're just showing me. Remember when um, Remember when Pelosi said you had to wear a mask or you couldn't carry a gun? You couldn't carry a gun if you were coming into Congress. Y'all remember? And remember there was a metal detector right after January 6th? Do you remember the Congress people walking around the metal detector? Remember that? Now, if you're going to walk around a metal detector and carry a gun into the Congress building, do you think somebody's going to get in trouble for, for a comment? These people actually had arms, weapons. These people actually defied the Capitol Police. They defied the Speaker of the House. And you really think that somebody's going to get in trouble for a comment? This is where we are. And I don't mean to... I don't mean to I don't mean to say, Erica, I'm sorry, dear. I don't mean to yell at you. I'm not, I'm not yelling at you. You are right. We should be back there. We should have decorum. We should have civility. We should hold these people accountable. Nancy Pelosi should hold them accountable. The problem is they've, uh, they've um, blown, they've, they've um, when do you do that? When you, um, your bluff. They've, they've called her bluff. All these years, we have been acting out of civility. Out of, there's no rule book. This is how the former guy got away with so much stuff. There's no rule book that said presidents have to do these things. It was just always done that way. It was always done that way. That if somebody, if McCarthy said I would hit her in the head, it was always done that he would be censured, he would be removed from his post, he would be uh, dropped down in his status. Uh, you know, he would have really uh, been, he would have been asked to apologize on TV, right? Eight years ago, absolutely, all those things would have happened. Absolutely. Not anymore. Because they realize that Nancy Pelosi doesn't have any teeth, that the Capitol Police have no teeth, that Congress has no teeth, that you don't even have to show up for a for a, a, a if they subpoena you, you don't even have to show up. Did you know that they don't they don't? There's no teeth behind that law. They have no actual 
way to imprison somebody or arrest anybody? Because if they did, they would have arrested those people that walked in with guns right after an insurrection. So I'm sorry to say um, that I guess you touched on a nerve. Um, Erica, I, I wish you were, I wish, I wish we were back there where, where we did have civility, but we don't have it anymore. And, and we either have to put laws in place to give them the teeth. Um, no, I mean, the guides are saying we have to put laws in place. I mean, they're, they're, we can't count on people's good nature any longer. That's out the window. It's, it's, uh, it's out the window. So we're going to have to put laws in place. I hate to tell you, they're telling me right now he's a, he's a hero. McCarthy is a hero on the right. They're, sell, they're, they're selling t-shirts with him with a gavel. It's, it's de, what, what did Hillary say? Y'all, what did she say? Deplorables. They are deplorable. It's deplorable. She was right. It's deplorable. And I'm, I'm sorry, Erica. I didn't mean to go off on you, dear. It wasn't directed at you at all. It's just, it makes me so angry that we're in this place of, um, and that's, and that civility, that lack of civility, I need to say this apparently, that lack of civility is happening in your hometown, at your parking lot, you know, at, at the parking lot of your grocery store or wherever you're going, where people don't, I mean, I've noticed it because I'm, I'm really a civil person. I'm a very courteous person and I appreciate courteous. And I think that when you have, um, a hundred thousand people in your hometown that we all have to be courteous. You know what I mean? Like let people in when they're trying to merge. That's courteous, right? Um, waving at them for letting you in. That's courteous. Um, not racing to get the, the, the space before that person can get it. Not uh, grabbing the last of something before that person can get it. Because like buying all the toilet paper before other people can, you know, you buying a truckload of toilet paper so that nobody else has any, but you have yours. That's, that's where we are. That's the, that's the, that is the conservatives. That's the Republicans. Me first. They should change their, their whole thing to me first. So you see this in your local community as well, I guess is what they're saying. Whoo, I'm going to have to stop this because my blood pressure is going up and I'm not even, they're, they're the ones doing all the talking. Um, <laughs> um, Here's a, I'll, I'm going to answer this, I think, um, I might answer these last two questions. Dorothy says, how long will the vaccines we already have had be effective? I'm seeing completely, 100% effective, you know, right, to the same efficacy as the day you got it, um, that kind of efficacy, um, Uh, it's complicated. It's complicated because they're telling me it depends on how much virus is out there. <laughs> you know, they're going to be very, you're, you're protected if the virus, if you just come into contact with the virus casually. We have to talk about viral load. How much viral load are you getting? Like if you're exposed to it one time, no big deal. Five times, maybe there's a chance. Ten times, you're going to get it. Okay, so it's how many times have you been exposed to it and how much load is in your body? So the complicated answer is I just heard April of next year, but um, but I think it depends on how much of it is still running around and how much we're exposed to it. Does that make sense? So I can see us getting boosters um, spring to summer of next year. That's what they have to say. The last question I'm going to answer is um, two questions. Romeo asks, will there be another violent attempt to take over Congress or the White House? No, they're going to go local. They're going to go to your local state uh, areas. Um, that's where their power is, honestly. The oath, the the chocolate, o the, o the oatmeal cookies and the zero percenters, that's where their power is. Okay, and then um, Claudia wants to know, What's going to happen when the eviction moratorium ends on the 1st? This is the second question about this. She says people are going to be in a bad way. It's awful. And during the surge, it is awful. Um, this is what what worries me when I see... Uh, they're telling me that... Um, I'm just staring at the word eviction moratorium so I can connect with that energy. They're telling me that these people are going to find a way... 
Okay. Okay. Again. I don't know why I say these things. Okay. Here's what they just showed me. Okay. So there's an eviction. Okay. So people are going to be starting to be evicted, you know, maybe September 1st. I mean, I think they'd have to give them 30 days, but I don't know. Let's just say they're starting to be evicted sometime in August or September. And let's say that they go to live with friends. They go to live with relatives. They find places to go. Okay. People are going to find places to go. Uh, you are going to see some people living in their cars and whatnot. I mean, yes, absolutely. There is going to be an uptick in homeless people in shelters. Yes, absolutely. Um, that is a problem because of the new version, the D version that's out there. But the thing that they showed me that that is... I don't even know why I have to mention this. I think maybe I don't need to mention these things in the future. But the thing that they show me is that, you know, where we're going to have natural disasters, there's Red Cross tents. And um, I hear the news saying... There's more people in these Red Cross tents because they were homeless. And um, that's why there's more people in them. That It's something, it's linked. There's a natural disaster. There's a Red Cross tent that has a shelter. And the people in the shelter are actually homeless people seeking shelter, not only people seeking shelter from the natural disaster. So that makes, that that's, I think that's what they're showing me. And then... There, it's a problem because of the uh, the C nineteen D version that's running around. Um, it becomes a problem as far as keeping that uh, those people safe, if that makes sense. So here, this is the video. I'm going to end it here at one 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 one, which is a really good place to end it. Um, much love to you guys. I hope this um, made sense, or um, I hope that it helped you in some way. Um, I, I honestly really want to help you guys. That's the whole reason why I do these videos. And I think that when I feel like I'm just giving you guys uh, bad news, I don't I don't feel like that helps anybody, right? Um, so I would say everything is going to be fine. I see everything being better in the spring. I think that this D thing is going to, you know, kind of precipitously fall. I think that um, cooler heads are going to prevail. I think that we're going to work this stuff out because I think we have a lot of light workers lifting up everyone in light. And that is something that you can do instead of falling into depression or a neurosis or a uh, funk. Because um, I fall into those funks when I get all this bad news. The thing to do is to take care of yourself, take care of yourself, take care of yourself. Because you can't do anything. You can't do anything if you're in a funk you're not you're not really helping anybody or yourself right so if you're in a funk listen to some happy music take a walk in nature play with your dog pet your cat um go visit your grandkids uh do something do something that makes you happy forcefully do something that makes you happy intentionally do something that makes you happy because that happiness brings the positive vibrations up and more positive vibrations we have, the better the outcomes for all of these things will be. Literally, laughter is, is a big, huge dose of good medicine. So don't let this stuff get you down. Um, knowledge is power. Um, but also, I really need you guys to take care of yourselves because you're a light worker. We need all of us here. The guides keep saying we need all of us here next year because... We're going to be those people to pick these other people up. We are. We are. When our society starts getting put back together and we all start liking and trusting each other, when we all start going to baseball games and basketball games and church group cookouts or, um, you know, bowling leagues or, you know, fundraisers, whatever it is, it's not just going to be D's or R's. It's going to be both. And we need to find a way to compassionately accept our differences and each other again. And I, and, I, and I say that with this. Those R's are going to come towards the middle. They're going to come towards the middle. They're, they're not going to stay way over there. The people that are going to stay way over to the right are going to be pockets. But the average R is going to try to find 
middle ground because they, they know they need to. And we're seeing it already. So maybe I'll copy this and put it at the beginning of this video. Um, anyway, I probably will. Uh, listen, much love to you guys. Take care. Um, thank you so much for supporting my channel. I have so many new subscribers. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. Um, I do offer classes. Medium Kim and I offer mediumship and psychic classes. They're lots and lots of fun. Please think about joining us in one of those classes. Um, other, other people are offering classes. Please support us all. Um, as the politics kind of ramps up here, some of our videos may be taken down. Who knows? Some of your channels might be taken down. So try to really support everybody because if not, um, we might not uh, be here for you to check out. So much love to you guys. Everybody take care. Thanks for subscribing, liking, and uh, commenting. Adios. For entertainment purposes only.